Well, hello, folks. Here we are at part number seven of the 10 administration and control within the bitstream relative to time division multiplexing and pulse code modulation for T type and E type carrier R2015 update. Now, why did I say all that? Well, that's in case someone has just stumbled upon this video and they have no clue what this is a uh, part of. So, if that happens to be you, I would suggest that you check our playlist and jump over to the beginning so that you can follow this in a logical sequential order. At least that's the plan I put together. Continuing on, top-down digital system concept. I'm drawing, instead of binary digits, I like to draw buckets in time. So my transmitter over here is sending a stream of buckets. How many? This many buckets. Over here from the transmitter to the receiver, the transmitter down here is sending how many buckets? Well, it depends on if it's T-type or E-type. That's how many buckets, right, bits per second, are being transferred. And it's full duplex, meaning they're sending and receiving at the same time. Even if we choose not to use it that way, which is often the case when we're in a voice call, because we'll talk and then the other person listens, and then they talk and then we listen, unless you have a teenager. Um, there are three types of buckets. Uh, we have the buckets that are carrying calls, digitized voice, or possibly digital data. I'll just call that payload stuff because the company gets paid for you know, carrying that stuff. Um, so I got the uh, uh, blue buckets here, which is uh, payload stuff. And then I've got, um, particularly in the case where I have uh, voice calls, I have to control the voice calls. Where are they going? You know, the dial. Where, who are they trying to dial at the distant end? So that would be the control stuff, the black stuff here. And then finally, I've got system overhead. I'll call system control buckets down here. So I've got three different kinds of information traveling across in these buckets. And the receiver over here has to make sense out of it. Okay, which bucket am I looking at? Am I looking at a payload bucket, a con call control bucket, or a system bucket? And there's a way to do that, and I'm going to show you. Here we go. The earliest system, T-type, was known as SuperFrame. It's an overview for you know this very early system. I don't know if anybody's still running SuperFrame. I kind of doubt it, but uh, it's a good place to start because the next one is even more confusing. So what I have here is a grouping of uh, 12 frames known as a super frame. The system has to line up. Remember, we've looked at that before. And the T system uses a single bit for lineup so that the receiver can synchronize to the transmitter so that it knows where every bucket in time is. OK, so that starts the framing. That then allows us to or allows the receiver to bunch up the next eight bits and call that time slot one and the next eight bits is time slot two right but the system framing only occurs every other frame here right so the system framing pattern which is this right here only occurs in number one frame number one number three five seven nine and eleven the red guys right here then the next piece was the payload remember the payload the voice let us call if we're going to send off hooks, on hooks, call control functions, that is signaling functions, we uh, have to know where those things go. Where are they within this massive stream of bits coming in here? 1.544 million bits per second. It's going to have to figure out how, where the signaling function is. Because in the T systems, we'll do this thing known as bit robbing where we occasionally come in here and let's say that this is the 8-bit byte for a voice call right here right it's recurring 8,000 times per second during the sixth this one two three four five six during the sixth frame and the twelfth frame we use the least significant bit the least significant bit for just that one frame appearance is the off hook on hook control for the call. Right? So we have to know where number one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to twelve, we have to know which frame it is because we're only going to do that little stealing thing during the sixth and the twelfth. Some 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 people will know this as an A and a B channel. 
So we have to know that this signal framing pattern right here tells the receiver which one is number one, number two, number three, so that it can recognize when it's in number six that the voice call may be using this bit rob process for off hook on hooks. You okay with that? I hope so because this one here doubles it. <laughs> this is known as extended super frame and it uses 24 frames but the concept's still the same. Uh, it's just a much uh, better system. The hardware got better, the clocks got better, everything got better. So instead of using 12 frames, they used 24. We still have to know where the beginning of a frame is, so that's our system framing, but it only occurs in frames number 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, and 24. The system can get enough information with that m many skips. Right? It doesn't have to be smacked in the face every frame. It only has to be smacked in the face during these frames, and it's looking for this pattern right here. Not only will it tell it where the frame start is, but it'll also tell it which frame it's looking at, right? In the earlier one, we had to have a different one, right, to say, okay, it's in the 6th and the 12th. Well, this one also does the 6th and the 12th, but it also does it in 18 and 24. So it needs to know which of the 24 it is because if we do a bit robbing of the least significant bit for the voice channel, we got to know which one we're doing it in. Yep. And because this is such a better system here, we can do other functions in the overhead here. This single bit right here not only can be the system framing, but it can also function as a system level data link to send little messages back and forth to the, from the transmitter to the receiver. Customers never see this. And that occurs in these start marker bit positions in frame 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so on, all the way down to 23. And then finally, because this system is so much better than the earlier one, they can send uh, from the transmitter to the receiver a thing known as a cyclic redundancy check, which is really just a kind of a number that uh, the receiver can look at and determine if there were any errors in the complete transmission. Now, some of you would say, oh, that's pretty cool, because if there are errors, you can uh, ask for a retransmit. Well, you can do that in data applications, but you can't do that in T-type systems. Uh, you never retransmit a frame. But you can tell how the, well, you know, what the health of the system is by that uh, CRC. So ESF extended super frame is probably what, uh, I would say, uh, almost 90% 99% probability that if you're running T-type, uh, you're running ESF. I don't know any place that would still be running old SuperFrame because this is so much better. Okay, this one is a handful, so I don't want to get too far into it. It's easy to get lost in here, but this thing uh, effectively does the same thing as the T, except it's got more stuff. Um, and the E-type the frame numbers are 0 through 15. The multi-frame, instead of being 12 or 24, the multi-frame is 16 frames, 0 through 15. Why we have to have that 0 in there? Gee, many Christmas. Um, and in the, um, the time slot 0 up here, now remember, this is a time slot full 8 bits, not like the T. It had a single bit. This is a full 8 bits right here. So time slot zero is all the system control stuff. And believe me, this can get really, really confusing depending on how these things are provisioned. There's a massive number of ways you can do uh, stuff in here in this first time slot zero. Time slot 16, it really depends on if you're talking about channel associated signaling or common channel signaling. All right, so time slot 16 can do these two functions and it also functions as the multi-frame alignment system because if you're doing uh, call control functions either channel associated or common channel you're doing it in uh, time slot um, 16 here across the system so you need to know which one is time slot 16 and which frame of the 16 you're dealing with and I'll have to show you that a little bit more because um, we'll have to go into the tech uh, a bit deeper for you to understand the difference between how tan, uh, time slot 16 is used for channel associated or common channel. This this is a handful, it really is, but once again I want to explain to you because if you go into some of these very high bit rate 
um, fiber optic kinds of systems the framing structures and the overhead structures are massively even more complicated than this so this is kind of like an introduction to get you uh, to the point where you can think about doing something and then not doing it for a long 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 string of bits and then doing something and then gazillion bits and then doing something um, the the synchronization becomes incredibly important uh, when you're doing all these various kinds of control functions and overhead functions in these gi gigantic bazillion bit long strings so we're going to look at that a little bit deep deeper here about why you need to know these frame numbers right because you got system control and call control functions now I've got a lot more data about what's going on in here in an, a different tutorial so I'm gonna hit these pretty high and you're still gonna think this is awfully nasty uh, confusing stuff if it's your first adventure into it so I want you to remember some terms here over the next couple of slides try to do this in band and the band we're talking about here is the voice band, 300 to 3,000 cycles per second or hertz. Out of band, meaning it's within uh, the voice, the voice channel. The voice channel has historically always been zero to 4,000 cycles. Inside of the voice channel, we had a voice band, which is 300 to 3500 or so. So the voice band, 300 to 3500, fits within the voice uh, channel. Anything above 3500 but below 4000 is out of the voice band. Right? This, I'm being real technical here because people are using this incorrectly all the time. Now when we get over into our digital systems, not in band out of band it's we're doing it in the digital slots or out of the digital slots these are not the same as these right? and then within all of this we can have channel associated signaling CAS that's root associated meaning it takes the same physical path it's in the same carrier system or we can have common channel which can be within the same carrier system or it can be completely external from the carrier system so this probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you uh, the first time you've heard this but keep this in mind I'm going to be using these terms right here to show you how some of these things can work and do work okay here we are channel associated tones simple telephone call I didn't even put the switch in here yet I've got a touchstone phone out here I might even have a little rotary dial anybody remember that stick your finger in and you know yeah 10 pulses per second who cares what we're gonna do is we're gonna go off hook and make a call and when we do this channel associated tones we're gonna use we're going to either use a single frequency SF unit in the United States the ones I worked on um, for many years were 2600 cycles there were some 24s and I'm pretty sure Europe used a whole bunch of 24 also but we use 2600 cycles right here and what we're going to do then is we're going to insert that into the voice channel here's the voice band 300 to 3500 that's the part that we can actually use to talk on the signaling frequency for off hooks on hooks that kind of stuff that's in the voice band of 300 to 3500 here's the voice channel 0 to 4000 Hertz so the channel is that wide but the filters only let you use 300 to th about 3500 so the 2600 fits in the band now there's another type over here I'm showing an n type carrier channel unit and I worked on the gazillions of these this system right here would take the control functions for making the off hooks the call controls and it would put it into a tone that was 3700 cycles per second or Hertz this is out of the voice band but still within the voice channel this will become important when I get over to the digital system you'll know why I'm, I'm haranguing you on this. this 0 to 4 is the voice channel 300 to 35 is the voice band 
this is obviously out of the voice band right it still functioned the same way as far as the system was concerned because I I went off hook over here uh, I put a battery on my M lead which is like you can remember it because a lot of people say it's the mouth lead right so so I put battery on my M lead meaning I've, I'm seizing this circuit what happens is I kill the 2600 over here if I seize the circuit on here I kill the 3700 cycles the other end recognize the loss of this or this as a requirement to get ready to receive a call right the off hook if I go off hook out here I kill the 26 if I go off hook out here I kill the 37 so I'm seizing forward toward the distant switch which I'm not showing at this point All right there's the true meaning of in band and out of band once we get to the digital systems just like so many other things in our industry people started using these words incorrectly now does it make a difference most of the time no but when you're in here learning this for the first time if you don't get the words right you don't understand the process okay now I mentioned here that um, you know, I had uh, dial pulse, or, you know, yeah, ta, 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 like that, but pretty much everybody is actually using this on their home phones. It's known as dual tone multi frequency or DTMF. This is used in the local loops. When you push the button on your uh, home phone right here, two tones will go out. This one and this one when you push a one, you know, over here, this one and this one when you push a nine most people don't know about these extra buttons over here because they're not on a home phone a keypad but uh, these were used in a lot of military applications that I worked on so this is often called a t uh, two by one two three four five six seven eight it's often called a two by eight or DTMF or the the um, copyright name for a long time or trademark name was uh, uh, touch tone but I think they've dropped that. I don't think it's now AT&T's. I'm not sure. I don't think it is. So, but DTMF or two by eight or you know whatever, that's the home keypad. But there's an earlier one than that, known as multi-frequency, and this is used in trunking between switches. And if you're old enough, you might remember that when you made um, long-distance calls in the past. You put the number in, and you could hear a little katunk, and then you'd hear doo -doo 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 -doo. that was the multi frequency going out on the trunking system to be able to grab processes at the distant switch. Every once in a while, you'd hear that MF. It is not the same set of frequencies as over here, it's much older than this, and it uses a different uh, tone set right here. So, this is an analog call control. Now, I'm going to ask you, is this in band right here because this is what would go over the trunk sometimes you would send this in special applications but most of the time this goes to the switch the switch would then analyze the number that you want to call it would grab enough equipment to be able to set that up and then if necessary it was on an analog kind of a trunk it would grab a MF sender and it would send those tones out do 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 like that now if you were one of the old phone guys like me I'd get up on one of those trunks and I had a physical keypad that I could punch these numbers in on right it didn't go really quick like that do 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 it went like doot 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 you know when I push the button so be aware that there's two kinds of uh, multi frequencies the really old one MF and the newer one DTMF right so did you answer that is this in band is this in band and the answer of course is yes it is okay so I'm gonna give you some specific examples now of uh, in band right here here's our loop start or DTMF out here um, dual tone multi-frequency touch tone so you've grabbed the the system by going off hook and you've closed the loop out at your phone it uh, goes in here to the switch and it um, analyzes the number that you want to send it's de determined that it's not a local call so it's going to have to grab some trunk equipment so it did it grabbed some trunk equipment right here it's now going to have to seize forward 
it's going to have to seize that trunk so that nobody at the other end can try to come in on it this direction. And it does that by putting battery on this M lead, the, the mouth lead. That battery then will uh, grab this SF unit, s a single frequency, 2600 or 2400. That's what controls the seizure, right? So when this gets grabbed, it will stop sending um, uh, 2600. That will be going through this codec. Remember the T system is a it's a digital system here so the SF it just gets treated like voice normally so the SF is going out here to the distant end where they have an SF unit that sees or listens to that tone. So now we've seized this, the trunk has seized this, it takes the tone off. That lack of tone then is transmitted to the SF receiver over here. Now is this in band? Is that supervision process in band? Well 2600 is in band, huh? Okay, so now the thing is seized forward. Now typically what happens is some indication comes back over here, sometimes called a wink. So now this thing was sending 2600 this way. For just an instant the 2600 drops off. Right? It's treated like voice through the codec, so that 2600 comes over to the SF receive. When the SF receive unit um, detects that there was a momentary uh, loss of 2600, it's called a wink, just it went away for an instant and then came back on. That puts a, a ground over here on the E-lead, which is often equated to the ear. Right? E-lead that tells the trunking equipment that the the link now the trunk is ready to go the equipment over here is ready to receive the telephone number so now the trunk equipment will grab that MF sender not the DTMF it will grab the MF sender and it will outpulse through the voice path doo -doo 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 like that and that goes through the codec over to the other end where the MF receiver detects the number and connects to the local subscriber over there. Now I just showed you that this is a T-type T system here. It's a digital system, but we are using it as an in-band um, supervision and signaling circuit. The supervision trunk access, trunk grabbing, is controlled by the 2600 uh, SF, but the actual signaling, the telephone number being sent, is done by MF, both of which are in-band. All right, continue on this, out of band. Now you'll notice right away here that I don't have, right, I don't have a digital system here. It's got to be an analog system. And why is that? Because I'm going to start doing the same thing I did before, only this time when the trunk equipment seizes forward, it's going to seize a 3700 cycle frequency, not a 26. What does the T carrier have in it? Come on, coming right into the channel unit, it has a filtering system that only allows the voice band into it. It only, remember we did this, sample quantizing and code. It's sample quantizing and code, but there's a filter up front that only lets the voice band 300 to 3400, 3500. It will not let 3700 come in. And so therefore, the whole thing I just talked about cannot happen in a digital system because the system will not allow 37 out of band, out of the voice band, cannot work on T or E. It only can work on analog systems where you can grab that little, what typically would be called the guard band above 35 but below 4. So. The same thing would happen here, but it has to be an analog system, not a digital system. So if you hear somebody talking about out of band on digital, they don't know what they're talking about. You can't do it. Okay. What you can do is what's known as in slot or out of slot, not in band or out of band. It's in slot or out of slot. Now this time I'm just showing you the seizure forward here, right? because the voice path is still going to go through the codec this way and that way. All right. So I'm going to seize forward on the M lead. The trunking equipment over here seizes over here because it wants to grab the equipment over here at the distant uh, end. But in T-type carrier, in SF and ESF, I'm only showing frame number six, but remember SF has 12 frames, ESF has 
24 frames, right? So I'm going to steal the least significant bit, but I'm only going to do it in that voice channel during the 6th frame, the 12th frame, the 18th or 24th, if I'm in, you know, extended super frame. So this is known as in slot, not in band. And if you don't know what the difference is, you don't know how to understand how T systems work, because this is not a tone, but it functions like a tone. Remember the 2600, I say I take it off and I put it on, right? That's the seizure. Well, over here, I'm just changing a bit from one to zero to indicate off hook, on hook, seizure, release. But I'm only doing it during the sixth appearance of this channel. Right. And not only that, I can do it here in frame 6 and call that the A channel. And I can do it in B, in the 12th frame, right? And call it the B channel. And if I do it in the 18th frame, I call it the C channel and the D channel. So I can have an A and B on this super frame, and I can have A, B, C, and the D. But this is called in slot, not in band. Okay. All right, then finally out of slot, and there's lots of variations on this. Uh, once again, I'm seizing forward here to go to the channel unit, but here this gets a little dicey in the um, E system because instead of robbing like I do on the T, <coughs> I just uh, designate time slot 16, and I say if I'm doing uh, channel associated supervision signaling, I have four bits in time slot 16 right here that can specifically tell me about the off hook on hook states of time slot number one the voice channel so I'm not robbing from voice channel uh, time slot number one right here I'm doing the off hook on hook functions the a b c and d functions over here in the first four bits of time slot 16 oh, yeah mm -hmm. and the second four bits of time slot 16 the first time it appears in frame one, actually, that talks about the off hook on hooks for time slot 17 or voice channel 16. I told, I've said this so many times, you have to keep doing this over and over again. It's a time slot, but it's a voice channel, right? Time slot 17 is actually voice channel 16. So the purple belongs to the purple, or the, I should say this purple belongs to that and this green belongs to that. Well, the next time time slot 16 comes around, guess what? They notch over to this voice and to the next voice, right? So, massively confusing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is still channel associated because I know in uh, you know, time slot 16, these four bits are de dedicated to that channel, and these four bits are dedicated to that channel. The next time it comes around, uh, these four bits will be to this channel, and these four bits will be to this channel. Right? So it's channel associated, just like I was before. And then finally, out of slot, not out of band. And people do this all the time. When they talk about common channel signaling system, they're talking about out of band. Nope, 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 nope. It's completely out of the system on occasion because I take my trunking equipment, I create a data function that tells the distant end uh, to go off hook for this particular call or that particular call. So it's a data function that can be run into time slot 16 in the same system that the voice channels are on or in a completely separate system. Right? So it can go completely out. So you, you wouldn't need to use ta uh, time slot 16 for this data application talking about what the, uh, the calls are doing. Now, you know, off hooks, on hooks, all that kind of stuff. You can put this out in a completely separate system. Right? That's why it's called common channel, because this information here is common to all of the voice channels going across the carrier system. Now, I know this went, it may not seem like it, but I went through this incredibly quickly, uh, something that's incredibly complicated. Um, so you might want to you know, go through it again. And I said to a lot of people, you really need to stop the video and read all of the stuff that I have on the slide, because it just, you can see it. I put in a lot of extra material on there that I don't uh, 
talk about too deeply. So how about some variations on these carrier systems here? Once again, I've got a lot of information. You might want to stop and read all this stuff. So I got loop start, ground start, or other call control functions out here. Um, and my signaling supervision uh, tutorial, I'll go into all this, what the heck all that means. So I got these local loops come in here to make a call. If they're calling each other, I never have to worry about a trunk. Uh, what's a trunk? It's the path between two switching entities most of the time. Um, so I've got a four-wire twisted pair short haul carrier system. Typically in nowadays, it'll be a T system or an E system of some type. Um, so when I make a call that uh, has to go over here, I have to pick up a trunk. And all the different things we just went through, right? It could be, um, uh, uh, I just lost it. Uh, in band, out of band, in slot, out of slot, common channel lots and lots of variations on that in order to get over here. Would there be as many trunks in here as there are lines out here? Not in a million years because uh, only a certain percentage of people would ever want to call over here at the same time. So all of that kind of stuff, um, you know, Erlang theory, how you uh, build the, the number of trunks and so on. I have yet another tutorial on that. More geographical variations over here. If um, the call you want to make from over here is a, a way across country, you're not going to go directly from a switch to a switch. You're going to go from a switch to an um, intermediate transit or toll switcher over here. And this can really get confusing because from here to here, I can have you know a certain kind of uh, call control stuff. In band, out of band, in slot, out of slot, common channel, associated, associated, all those things. And I, over here on this side, I could, have, I could have a completely different trunk access. So, very, very confusing on occasion. You can see how that could possibly be. So, the trunk sizing, I have, uh, as I said, Erlangs and hamburgers. Um, so, if you want to know more about how, how you figure out how many trunks to put in here so you don't block people trying to get you know, from one place to the other. Okay, and then even more geographical variations. And part of the reason I stuck this in here is because um, there's this thing known as a, um, a remote terminal on uh, car uh, carrier serving areas. Um, and the interface for those particular systems, and they, they look directly, I can tell you, like a slick 96, subscriber loop carrier 96, it, it functions like a T system, but the, um, the exact, exact processes are different because these are remote terminals out here, and so they have to do functions that inner office T terminals do not. Um, so they have uh, a different kinds of protocol, even though the basic structure is still the same, sample quantize and encode. Um, so there are different uh, processes that have to occur across this link that don't occur across standard T-type um, or E-type uh, systems. So uh, there's this interface here. That's what these are. These are interface standards um, to be able to have uh, one of these local terminals effectively uh, talk to uh, a big POTS terminal like this. Or in our case, we are using uh, base station controllers uh, switches for our... Um, um, cellular radio system. So these interfaces right here, very complicated technical standards, um, allow you to talk about those kinds of things. So these subscriber loop carriers have many types of call control testing, lots and lots of them. Um, so these interfaces have to be able to uh, handle that. Now you'd still, you still reference this as a trunk in this particular instance because it's it's connect connecting lots of uh, telephones out here to lots of telephones over here, right? So, and they also do other things like this. So make sure you read all of the little um, notes on this slide. So, huh, here we are. <laughs> Don't be afraid. It's just a little test. How many frames in T-type extended super frame? You remember that? Extended super frame. Come on. You got it. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is, right? How many frames in E type multi frame? Multi frame. Uh, you ready? Yeah, there you go. 16. Signaling the supervision running inside a channel is called mm -hmm. channel associated. 
because it's going with the channel, right? We don't know exactly what form it is, but it is associated with the channel. It's, it's not inside the channel. It could be out here, right? But it is. It's, if it's running inside the channel by either bit robbing or dedicating a certain four bits to time slot 16 in the E system, it's channel associated. Out of band 3700 hertz can only occur on what? Yeah, I know I told you. Yes, only analog carrier uh, channels can do that. Only the analog, because the digital ones have a filter up front that only allow voice band 300 to 34, 3500 cycles, and you can't stick the 37 on there. So, there you go. End of part seven. I bet you thought we'd never get here. So. Thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, I haven't uh, completely messed up your mind because this was just the introductory level of stuff. It really is. Uh, you, like I said, you start getting into these really, really f complicated systems um, and try to look at the overhead protocols on those systems. It's a handful. This was just a small scoop. Okay. See some of you on part number eight.